Hey guys, welcome back. So a short video today about this thing. This here is a flashlight. It's actually my old man's flashlight. It's got LEDs on one side and it's got a um, automotive fog light bulb on the other. And uh, my dad loves this thing because it has a tilting head and when he's doing construction on the house he can just tilt the head to whatever angle he wants and he has light and set it down on a heavy base. It used to have a rechargeable uh, lead-acid battery, a 6-volt one, but uh, that battery got really hot. And I don't know if you can see it, but right here, started melting the case. So he gave this to me to see if I could fix it, and I decided that uh, instead of buying a new 6-volt battery, I would just put in a lithium battery. So I gave him a lithium battery, 2-cell lithium battery with a charger that charges through the balance port. And recently he has lost that charger, uh, which is fine. I told him I would just bring it home, uh, charge it, and bring it back to him since he doesn't use it all that often, and order him a charger. Well, I got interested to see the uh, voltage on this, so I gave it a look. And look I did indeed. So here's the balance connector. Set this DC volts, and if you don't know how this works, is uh, this is a two-cell pack, and... And I put the probes on one end to the other. I should get the total voltage of the cells, both cells that is, and each individual here from one to the other, then the other to, to the other, should give me the individual cell voltage. So let's just check the total cell voltage. I don't know what's the best way to do this, but let's do it like this. As long as I'm still in frame. So that's one there, and that's the other there. 4.483 volts. Now, if you know anything about lithium cells, you'll know that's a problem. Each lithium cell should not go under 3.3 volts per cell. In fact, if you look at the manufacturer data, some of them are good to 2.5 volts per cell, but regardless, that's low. So let's check individual cells. So again, I'm just going from one end to the middle. Trying not to short my probes together. Also trying to stay in shot. 1.388 volts for that one cell. I'm going to switch them around. And 3.094. So the second cell is a bit low and the first cell is very low. Now Big Clive did a video about these cells and it turns out that you can recover them if they go too low um, but the important thing is that they don't get reverse charged. Right. This is only two cells in series, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, the problem becomes when you have three cells, uh, three cells in fact, in series, the middle cell can get reverse charged by the other two. But that's not what's happening here. So I was just going to charge this, and that wouldn't have made a good video. But now, since the cells are dead, or at least one cell is dead, I wouldn't say dead, but probably not good for... Uh, just a general purpose use, uh, I figured I would throw another cell in there. So that means we have to open this up, remove the battery pack in there, and put the new battery pack in. Just a quick introduction to the donor cell. This is a two pack of 18650s wired up to an odd connector I haven't seen before, but it looks like an XT60 just uh, scaled down a lot. It's got two kind of beefy wires here, it's got the balance lead. And uh, the cell that's actually in the flashlight now is a set of 14500s, so double A size cells. A little bit smaller, and I don't know the capacity on them, I don't remember, but I know it's less than 1500 milliamp hours. So this will actually be an upgrade for him too. So now we need to get that flashlight opened. It's been quite a while since I've opened this thing, so I'm going to try to figure it out. I, I see that there's a, there's a split line here. Right, these are two halves, but usually when there's two halves, you have to check for something going over, like these ends, to uh, that will hold it shut. So if I open like this, you'll see there's the two halves again, and this doesn't seem like it's holding it shut. So this end's probably fine, like it is. There is a screw down there. I'll probably take this thing all the way off. Over here, though, this doesn't tilt. And I can see that the mold lines go all the way, the split lines, I should say, go all the way underneath here. So I'm going to try to pop this off first. So this is like a, 
it's rubber but it's extremely hard this is made to be tough and with a giant six volt lead lead acid battery in there um, I suppose there's a lot of weight to deal with if this thing ever falls my dad's also a practical man he doesn't care if I mar this up with a screwdriver which is good because uh, I'm probably gonna end up marring it up these things are sort of designed to go on once and then never be taken apart again this thing was actually really cheap but uh, if you don't find them on sale they're quite expensive to buy I think he paid uh, 20 bucks for this thing on sale from uh, I think Canadian Tire I'm not sure uh, no, probably not I'm not sure where he got this point is though with just uh, parts I have laying around at home I can give this thing a new leaf on, lease on life maybe Sorry for being off shot there. Okay, so now we've got a screw here and a screw here. Let's open these up. My comically long screwdriver. That's one. And that's two. Again, my old man's a practical man. He knows that if I can't fix this, uh, it's probably not worth getting fixed. So it looks like, looks like I have been in here before, which I have. Not sure why I have taped this, but I guess we're going to figure that out pretty soon now, won't we? Alright, let's move on to the other screws. So there's one definitely here. I think this one has a captive nut on the other side. Yeah, it does have a nut. So there's one screw in here, but I'm not sure if I need to reach the 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 two power switches or anything. Don't see a screw in there. I am partially blind when it's dark though. Nope, no screw in there. It's gotta be something else holding this shut. Maybe it is this handle. Let's let's take that one off. The screwdriver is borderline too big for this. It is a number two, but it's kind of girthy. Put that over there. Bring this up. I think I remember. I think there's screws underneath this plastic. I don't know if I have a uh, small prying screwdriver. I'll pause you for a second. Go get one. Da -da -da -da, got one. This one's kind of mangled, but kind of suits our project here. Let's see. Gently getting under here. Aha! Some screws. Hopefully, this is the only side with them. If not, well, gotta take the other plastic off. Well, that's kind of long. Okay. So, one down there. There might be one down there too. You can kind of feel the body come apart now. Tiny little guy down there. This was a long time ago. 
So let's see what I did here. Okay, there's the charge lead. Pull this out. Looks like I wrapped, oh, there's a JST. Okay, take this apart. I think I had taped this to prevent these cells from shorting on on the uh, sharp edges or on the solder joints here. Or maybe I just taped them down to something. So here we go. Oh, 1500 milliamp hours. And are those? Oh, they're 18650s. They're exactly what I was going to put back in. Okay, that's fine. Can deal with that. So there we go. Nothing ruptured. That's great. And here, yeah, I probably just taped. Yeah, this is the main power going to the board. And I just taped on a uh, JST adapter onto there. Let's take a look at this power board. So there it is in all its glory. Here's the uh, input from the wall charger. Not the one I put in, mind you. This was for the lead acid battery. So, got some power in here, and they would go pretty much directly through these two resistors. And you see how this says 1178 uh, fuse? I think they were trying to, to say that if these resistors got too hot they should burst open and the uh, battery would be saved because there is another fuse here from the battery so it looks like these did get hot that's what's scorched on the board and this is probably what melted the case or almost melted the case and if I feel them they feel really chalky as if the coating has been toasted off or something diode protection there is a fuse for the battery, which is great, especially since we're going to be using lithium cells again. These are the two separate outputs. One is for the LEDs. Um, the other one goes to the switch, and then looks like a transistor. Uh, one here and one here for the ground. Yeah, it looks like uh, this power transistor here will switch open. We'll switch the. Um, the fog light on and off. This is a bit loose, so I might just tighten that down. Part in the avalanche of stuff and part in the rusty pliers that have been left outside in the rain once. Just tightening that down so I can hoik it onto here. There we go. Don't forget the tighter that connection is, the less uh, resistance it'll have. But okay, we can try to put this all back in. This looks like the tilting mechanism from, yeah, it's, a, it's the clutch from this tilting mechanism. We'll have to work that out, how it went in. But let's put these all in the case and put it all back together. Now remember the piece with the black here, that's where everything was sitting in. There's the attachment point for the tilt. And it looks like a little wire duct here. I'm going to put this down like this. Yeah, if you look, the power resistors go directly here, so that's what got really hot. Okay. I'm going to slide this inside here. Make sure not to trap any wires. Everything in here is so cheap. I put in, like, the battery packs are all, like, silicone leads. Super flexible. And this is all computer power supply wires, like really hard vinyl. Okay, I'm going to try not to stress the connections too much, but I think it'll be fine. I'll put this down like this. These guys go in here. Perfect. This will stick out probably on either side of post that will go like this that's good this here with its cable slot there we 
go. Good. And this will tuck back in under there. I took that out because I didn't want um, anybody to plug a charger into this that's not proper and backfeed voltage into the lithium cell. So now we have to figure out how to connect this to that. Well, these wires are pretty big. I wanted to crimp a JST lead, but I might just have to solder one now because these connections are way too big. So let's do that. You know, I was going to simply crimp a new connector on, but this as a two cell, this one's done. One of these two cells is no good. So I'll probably just cut this wire off and just solder it onto these wires because the pins for a JST will be probably way too big to fit on this fat wire here. It's a huge wire. What's it say there? 16 gauge and JSTs are typically this size which this one is 20 gauge. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to warm up the soldering iron. Probably zoom you in a bit. And let's see what we can do here. Now, number one trick is to only work with one wire at a time. So I definitely want both wires here, but I should only cut one at a time. One, line this up, stay away from this wire, and two, and make sure these two don't touch ever again. So we should come in with some tape and tape these up. Now my electrical tape is kind of indisposed for the moment. So I'm going to put this aside, being very careful not to short them. Could cause a fire, although one of the cells is already pretty well depleted. So for the next one, I'm going to strip these back so I get a little bit of working space to solder. One and two. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to cut... I'm going to cut enough uh, enough wire off this plug so that if I want to reuse this plug, I can. Okay, now again, I'm not cutting the other wire. I don't want these two to short together, so I'm not cutting the other one. Take these two, and uh, you can actually just loosely twist them together and the soldering process will provide the mechanical hold but if you wanted to twist them do a real solid connection that wasn't like inside a plastic case like this you'd probably want to cut that a bit longer I'm gonna see what I can do here yeah it doesn't look like it's gonna cooperate maybe I will actually cut a bit more length off just to get slightly better connection go. Oh, and we almost committed the cardinal sin. We need heat shrink on there first. I've got this kit from China with a bunch of different sizes. Don't have any already used ones. Nope. Give ourselves a good length. There we go. Restart the process. Put this on. So I typically solder at uh, 350C and I use leaded solder, not lead free. Now the point of using unleaded solder, lead free solder, is that we keep lead out of our, um, out of our waste disposal sites. But the point is this is probably not going to end up there anytime soon. It's going to be used and reused. I'm already on a net positive because um, I've already recycled this once before I added a new battery so I think in this case since we're net positive and the fact that um, leaded solder is much easier to work with I think we're I think we're just fine now if you're beginning 
and you're wondering how come your solder isn't very good, it's probably because it's lead free. Now if I was manufacturing things, then yeah, of course, I would, I would use unleaded solder. But for these one-off things, I think the environmental impact is virtually nil. The important thing is to not, you know, lick your fingers while you're working with it. Always wash your hands before you eat or drink. The smoke that you're seeing is actually just the flux inside the solder. This is the solder I use, cheap from China. So that smoke is actually not like vaporized lead or anything. It is actually just the flux. Not particularly good for you, but it's not like it's lead. Okay, now we need to shrink that down. Now to shrink that down, I have this hot air gun. I'm just going to pass that over like this. You might see some strobing in the lights there because it is a heating element that's being pulsed rapidly. And then it'll cool down so you'll hear it until it hits 100 C and then you won't hear it anymore. Okay, so now this is done. Now we're gonna go the other one, so I'm gonna cut this to approximate length, like this. Good. See, that went back and that went right onto here, so if we didn't insulate this, we would have shorted the battery. Same thing, I'm gonna strip quite a bit. I do have a lot of space in this casing, so I'm not too concerned but wire lengths. There we go. And then I'm going to wrap these. Oh, Cardinal Sin almost forgot the uh, heat shrink tubing. Heat shrink tubing again. Get a nice length of it. Put this back in the kit. twist these wires together, take my soldering iron. If you guys don't know how to solder, or if you guys want me to do a tutorial on how to solder, let me know in the comments below. It's not difficult, but I understand that uh, if you've never done it, or if you're not good at it, or whatever, it can be a little daunting. I understand that. So if you want me to cover a how to solder basics tutorial, let me know. It's good. Gonna squeeze this down. Sometimes you get a couple errant strands. Bring this over like this. And now I'm going to grab my hot air gun. there we go. JST'd. Perfect. Okay, so back to the assembly. And uh, I feel like I want to stick this down somehow. This board is kind of troublesome. kind of floats around there. There is a little bracket in there in the plastic that it sits into, but it's just not very solid. So I'm heating up the um, hot glue gun. Hot glue gun, by the way, it's a great way to fasten things semi-temporarily. It uh, sticks pretty well, but if you need to peel it off, you can still peel it off. So I'm going to put a couple dabs in this bracket here. Just lay the board into there. Turns out having some sort of hand-eye coordination does help. There we go. Just give that a couple seconds for it to cool. And that board will no longer be annoying me, which is great. 
Okay, now that that's set, yep, that is set. Got full of glue everywhere. Not a problem. Next part is to put the battery in and to set it down in a place where the balance lead still comes on the outside. The chargers that are very cheap charge by the balance lead and not by the main lead with the balance lead. And this balance lead is far shorter than the one on the one I took out. So, we still need to be able to position this in such a way that the balance lead is external. So I think I can snake it through here. I'm just going to pull this, this wire out here. This, uh, this charger board here is really getting in the way. I don't want to remove this just in case it does come to a point where it might be beneficial to put back a 6 volt lead acid battery. So I don't want that out. I don't want to cut it out. Here, I'll stretch these wires. So it seems like I can set this in here and have it run just out there like that. So I can set down this battery right there. So I will flip this up, put a couple dabs of, crate of hot glue onto these ribs. that and just set this down there we go I'm gonna hold it down for a few seconds now the more you put down the longer it takes to cool and so you just have to be patient with it still hot I still feel it after this is set down I'm gonna put a bit more up in this crease right here. Again, like I said, this is a good way to temporarily hold together. So it'll be tight, it'll hold together, and if you need to take it off, you can still scrape it off. So I'm just going to fill this void here. You shouldn't use too much of this at once though, considering that Lithium batteries don't like the heat too much, but they can handle it, they just don't like it. I'll bring you back once that's all dry and we can move on. And we're back. So, this is dry now. It's a little warm, but dry. I added some more right here, just a strain relief for the, uh, for the balance connector here. And uh, I also taped up the connections on the lithium battery. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with these lithium batteries afterwards at some other video. But you don't want to throw these out just in the trash, so don't do that. For now though, we have this build to finish. So I'm going to connect this, like this, right, black to black, red to red. And I have to confirm that it still works. Well, turns out this was already on. So yeah, it still works. I'm going to turn on the LEDs. That's one function of the LEDs. This another. Yeah, those two. One of those road safety type LED things. Okay. And so now that's all done. I'm just going to tuck these wires in like this. I want to make sure they don't rub on anything. I'm going to take the power connector here, the old charging lead I should say. I'm going to shove it over like that, just so it's not in the way. There we go. Make sure this is all tucked in. And now we need to get the other half of this plastic case and finish the assembly. Test it once more and we'll be good to go. So let's do that. So this is the half with the LED. As you can see, there's a release button and also the other end of the ratcheting mechanism, or the, at least the clicking mechanism. I'm not sure if it really ratchets. 
gonna open this up, make that easier. And that's what we like to see. It should come together with a satisfying snap, but not with too much force. Something is hanging up right now. I think, yeah, it's this, it's this adjustment mechanism here. Oops, popped open the bulb holder. So if I can't just wiggle this back together, I'll have to take it apart again. I know there's spring in there, in here. That could be what's holding it up. Yeah, it's not, okay, I get it. It's not lining up. So these actually have to line up on a set of posts underneath. And it should be, but it's not. I do remember setting it up so that it was aligned. It's possible it's not, and now it doesn't really want to come out. Okay, well, I'm going to fiddle with this off camera, and then I'll be bring you right back. Okay, so I got it. It was lined up. It just needed the force of uh, several eight-year-old girls. So, since I am now at least that strong, I was able to push it in. All right, so let's do the other bolts here. So, if you remember, these holes had these long screws. Probably shouldn't tighten them down too hard. This old brittle plastic at this point. So this screw here. With my stupid long screwdriver. Okay, just check the seams, make sure they're all lining up. Yep. Yep, so far so good. Maybe a bit of the glue is getting into there, but that's okay. Okay. We need uh, these short screws here, one per hole over here, one there, one there, and there was one definitely in the handle here. Oh, it's not going in. one of these that didn't have one. I think this one had one though. Put it in there. That's good. I'm just going to fit this back in. This should go. I have to feed the wires back in there. That's good. And that should go. There we go fits perfectly. Put this back in here. This uh, long screwdriver means I can't use I can't use it straight on or else I'm gonna bump the camera. One day I'll be fully moved down here and all my tools will be accessible. Okay, so, let's see. The clipping mechanism still works. It's good. I think the teeth are wearing quite badly on the ratcheting mechanism. There isn't much I can do about that. That's good. We're going to put the other section here, but first let's just see if it works. That definitely works. That definitely works. Okay, so I'm going to pop this next section on, 
and then I have to charge this battery and I can deliver it to my dad. But the charging might be a little bit complicated. This is a lithium battery and we only have the balance port sticking out, but I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so to charge a lithium battery without a, um, with just a balance lead and your charger that requires you to use a separate power lead, first we have to understand how lithium batteries are wired. So I'm just going to make a quick sketch. That would be the positive, that's the negative, and here's your other one, positive and negative. Okay, so the balance charger will hook up here. There's your balance lead. Sometimes it's the other way. Don't don't take my drawing uh, as the Bible, but okay, take this um, to the negative, and then there'll be another connection between the two, going to the middle of the balance plug. Now the actual plug that you'll use to I don't know supply a RC car or to plug into your charger or whatever. So there'll be one connection here, one connection here. This one will be the negative, this one will be the positive. All it is, is the negative from here, oops, and the positive from here. So theoretically, this wire here and this wire here are exactly the same, and this wire here and this wire here are exactly the same. It's just tapped off differently. Now the point of this is that you can use big wires for this to supply a lot of amperage and little wires for this for the balancing. The balancing is only done at a, a couple milliamps, like it's not anything major. But if you need to integrate your own plug, all you have to do is put two wires in parallel with these. And this is exactly what I've done. So I have a pretty good RC battery charger. Okay, the R Charger 206B amazing charger and all I did was I put some wires in the balance plug here since we can't reach to there. Now I'm just going to turn on the charger okay and so now I have lipo charge I can actually change that to lipo balance charge and I'm going to start connecting these now you see there's a black wire at the end here and I'll put my black wire onto there and that just leads back to, oh, I'll actually just pull these out to show you, that leads back to the balance connector where it would be plugged in. So the teeth are on this side, the holes for the teeth are on this side, so if the battery goes like this, goes black, blue, red, so this will be black, blue, red. So now for the red, I'm going to hook this up into this balance charger here, and then into the red, good. And now I don't have a blue lead, but I have an orange lead that'll do the same thing that goes in the middle, like so. And this will go in the middle here. Careful not to short anything out. Great. So now our balance connector is connected to the charger. You see? The charger sees it's a two cell. But it says main port question mark, meaning where the heck is the main leads? So these two leads, they're actually connected here. So all I'm going to do is I made this adapter, so XT60 to these um, male breadboard pins. I'm going to plug this into any one of these. Okay, and now the black, all these black pins here, all the pins at the end, they're all in parallel with each other. So I'm going to put this on any black pin. That's one. And same thing with all these red pins here, the third pin, so any third pin, all be parallel together. As soon as I plug this in, now my charger is not worried. Now I'm going to turn down the current a little bit, so let's say about half an amp, and I'm going to hold start, and this should charge with no problems. Now. Obviously, the regular rules apply. Do not walk away from this. Don't uh, don't decide that you don't need to watch this. You do have to watch it. And this will balance up. It'll do all of its thing by itself, and then it'll be ready to go. So with that, thanks for watching. 
Hope you like this video. If there's any videos you want me to cover more details about something, let me know in the comments below. It'd be nice if you can uh, shove a thumbs up or a subscribe, but you know what? That's all up to you. So thanks for watching. See you next time.